Creating this show for San Francisco has its complexities and, and yet we really tried to go with the most simple essence of what we're feeling right now in this time and place in San Francisco, which is to write a love letter to the city. We're a creative collective that really has developed over the last 20 years our own kind of collective voice on, on creating contemporary circus. So many people have a hard time kind of articulating what contemporary circus is. When we had classical ballet and it became contemporary dance and the way that you could express an idea or an emotion um, through more abstractions and, and feel a story without necessarily being told a story has really become our specialty. What happens in a Seven Finger show is there's an idea, a sort of thematic idea, what the show is, how the audience will feel. Um, and then it's cast. And when a show is cast, then you have a range of skills that these people together do these things. And they spend the beginning of rehearsal training all those skills together. And they learn each other's bodies, they learn trust, they build a kind of intimacy as a company. And then once they have that, then you say, the story we're trying to tell is this. We're in a really wonderful tradition in that room. That is the challenge, to make sure that we are honoring what was here before. I like to set it in the whole history of the building as opposed to just starting from the history of Beach Blanket and now we're the next thing. If you back up from Beach Blanket, there's Thelonious Monk recording alone in San Francisco with a live audience in there, the Grateful Dead's first album release party in there, all of the beat poets on that stage. And so in that sense, what we're trying to do is say we're in this history, there have been perfect things here, and we want you to know that, and we want you to measure us against that history, yes, but as a next thing, are we a valid next? I do believe that what we're trying to create could be a spiritual successor to Beach Blanket Babylon. It's like I can find all the little connecting points to what they did with what we're doing, but we're also in so many ways the polar opposite of what Beach Blanket was what it is in the, in the psyche of San Francisco culture. I think that there's something about this neighborhood and the fact that this jewel box theater as a space for people to come and congregate around art and joy and connectivity. We want to capture that feeling that Beach Blanket brought to the city and to the neighborhood. In so many ways, circus is one of the most joyful forms there is, which is also how I feel about singing, and that's what Beach Blanket was. So I feel like there's a wonderful parallel between the joy of belting a song that we can all relate to and the kind of awe-inspiring, explosive joy that we feel when we're defying gravity. Following Beach Blanket, you know what it is? It's not pressure in some negative way. It's not challenging. It's like, we got next. You know, it's like that kind of like, that was perfect what you did, we got next, you know? I believe that Dear San Francisco will really leave the audience feeling, I hope, as deeply rooted to the city or to this moment in the city um, as possible. What we hope is it takes people on the journey to both either remember San Francisco, if you have been living here, um, or discover what San Francisco is that you first fell in love with. The kind of thing that when you grab it, it disappears. But you feel it. You know what San Francisco feels like more than anything else. There's something about San Francisco in its essence that wants you to just be the person that you are. People say all the time, San Francisco's not what it used to be. But let me tell you, I lived here for 20 years, I've been gone for 15, it is still exactly like it used to be, and that's part of the reason that we're here. A city is a community, there is an ecosystem here,
that um, has struggled, as all ecosystems have struggled in the last year, but with San Francisco, the complexities are particular. I think the show actually is, in a way, trying just to celebrate that complexity and say, look how lucky we are <laughs> to be here and look at some of the more fragile aspects of the city that need to be celebrated and appreciated in order to preserve them. I definitely see this as a long-term morphing piece of art that people can come to and come back to and there'll be different performers and the numbers will change, the, the acrobatics will change, some of the music's gonna change, some of the aesthetic and some of the story is gonna change. I feel like what we're creating right now is really in response to the needs that we're all feeling in a kind of post-pandemic world, but I feel like that's gonna be totally different in three months or in six months. How are we gonna get through this next era together as a community? The future of San Francisco to me looks a lot like it's always looked. <laughs> It's always going to be this remarkable place on the planet. That's kind of the hope that the show creates for people, a sense that when you come back out on the street, when you see the cable car go you know, up Mason when you leave here, that you go, oh yeah, this is my city.